Hey friends, I'm Rob from TT Helicon. Have you ever wanted to record your own music but been confused about how to do it? I have, and because I understand the frustration of trying to figure out which gear to use and how to use it, I'm gonna walk you through all the different ways you can record using TT Helicon products. And I'll give you some general recording tips and tricks to get you started. Let's get into it. The first thing that you'll need in order to record is an audio interface. This lets you get whatever you're trying to record into your phone or computer, and it's essential for capturing high quality audio. Now, if you already own one of our multi effects pedals, you might have an audio interface and not even know about it. There are built in USB audio interfaces in the Voice Live 3 Extreme, the Voice Live Touch 2, everything in the Voice Live Playline, and in the Perform VK and VE. If you don't already have something with a built in audio interface, TC Helicon makes several dedicated audio interfaces for a variety of different tasks. Our most flexible interfaces are the Go Twin and the Go Solo. They have combi jack inputs, which allow you to record nearly any microphone, keyboard, guitar, or effect processor. They're incredibly compact and compatible with iOS and Android, as well as with Mac and Windows. They also have five pin MIDI ins and outs for use with synths or other MIDI hardware. These are perfect if you're looking for something compact yet flexible for recording on the go or at home. Our Go Guitar Pro is for those who are looking to just record guitar. It's tiny in size and it is an amp output, so you can record your dry guitar and then tweak your amp settings after the fact. We also make the Go Vocal and Go Guitar. These are only compatible with mobile devices, but they are a very affordable way to capture good quality audio. Go Vocal is perfect for those who want better audio for their Instagram live streams or their Zoom calls. Finally, we have this little battery powered hockey puck called Blender. It's a six stereo channel mixer with a multi-channel audio interface and four independent headphone outputs. This is the perfect solution for anybody using a few small synths, groove boxes, or drum machines who wants to mix them all together and record on the go. Once you have an audio interface, there's a few more steps you need to take before you can press record. First, you'll need to choose which device you're going to record into, and you'll need to decide which software you're going to use. The traditional choice is to record into a computer, but it's getting easier and easier to record into your tablet or smartphone, so you can capture audio literally anywhere. You'll also want to carefully select your digital audio workstation, or DAW. While a lot of them do about the same thing, some are better suited to certain tasks or workflows. For example, the DAW Ableton is often favored by electronic musicians who like working with software instruments because of its simple loop-based workflow, while Pro Tools is favored by studio recording engineers who are recording real-life instruments. Both programs can do essentially the same thing, but depending on what kind of music you want to make and how, your choice of DAW can make a big difference. Next, you'll want to connect your audio interface to the device you're recording with. Once you have the interface plugged in, you'll need to select it in your DAW's audio preferences. Next, we'll plug our instrument into our interface and double check that we aren't clipping. Clipping is that nasty, crunchy distortion you get when you overdrive the input on your audio interface. To avoid clipping, simply turn down the input gain on your interface. If your interface has a visual gain meter, you should check that, but you should always make sure that you take a quick test recording and check that there isn't any distortion. You do wanna make sure that your interface gain isn't too low, but it's better to have a quiet, undistorted recording than a loud, distorted one. Now you're all set up and ready to record. Our last piece of advice would be to make sure that you spend lots of time preparing and practicing before you press record. There's nothing worse than trying to edit out mistakes that could have been avoided with just a little bit more practice. For me, I try not to press record until I can run through what I'm recording without any mistakes. And that's all. You're ready to get out there and record your masterpiece. Let us know if you have any questions down below in the comments and be sure to like this video and subscribe for more content like this.